it's Uncle Joe Hikes. I'm out here actually at a local park. This is kind of an unused section of the park. And I thought, why not come out here and do a little walk around and full Gobi. I've been promising that. This will go in my Uncle Joe Jeep's playlist. So if you're not interested in this at all, you know, ignore it. <laughs> Some of you have expressed interest, so I thought I'd go ahead and, and do a walk around. So Gobi is a 2018 Jeep JK in 2018 they came out with the new JL models but they still released a JK for that year and this is a JKU because it's an unlimited meaning it's a four door in Gobi's case Gobi is an altitude edition which is essentially uh, a Sahara and they just badge it up a little differently you get the the star on the side to get the the star on the um, cow panel the little armor there you also get uh, an armored uh, gas tank filler and you get uh, an armored tailgate cover. I mean, not tailgate cover, tail light cover. So that's what kind of differentiates, I guess. You can also get running boards as well, and that kind of makes it an altitude addition. Um, everything else is Sahara. It came with the Sahara wheels, which are 18 inch wheels. I replaced those with. 32 inch tires the stock tires for a rubicon and rubicon wheels which are 17s because i want more uh tire than i want you know than you would get with an 18 inch wheel so that's kind of the reason for that i'm going to go to 33s eventually and that'll give me more more tire uh than an 18 inch rim would allow so you'd have a you know you'd have a smaller sidewall with an 18 and when you're off-road you want a, a larger sidewall so that's the reason for that uh, that's pretty much the only difference between the Sahara and the um, and the altitude that I can think of offhand. But yeah, that's what Gobi is. Uh, when I got it, I got it used. It had the American flag uh, grill cover there, which was kind of cool. Everything else I put on it, um, with the exception it did come with LED headlights and LED fog lights. Uh, but other than that, everything else you see on here, I pretty much did but uh yeah so let's just kind of start uh first of all the wheels i've already told you i i got some rubicon wheels and put on it um these are coming off i'm going to get some 33 inch tires i don't really want to go to 35s because the altitude like the sahara comes with 373 gearing and 33s are really about as high as you really want to go you can go 35 but you start to really start to notice the performance differences there I did change the stock suspension out for Rubicon Express springs and shocks, and that also got me an adjustable front uh, track bar and moves the, uh, I think it, they moved the front to the back. I'm not exactly sure how they do all of that, but basically it's got an adjustable front track bar. That was a, a requirement that I asked for um, just to ensure that that adjustment was there because when you lift the Jeep, you come up with different angles and things that need to be done uh, i did not get the control arm uh, brackets that would drop the control arms down because i'm not going to be doing anything wild as far as jeeping is concerned uh, this is a camping backcountry rig it's not really you know what can i roll over let's see what it'll do kind of a thing starting from the front we have the bumper that bumper is a barricade trail force hd I got that bumper because it allowed me to use the factory fog lamps and it was also a relatively easy bumper to install. Um, if I would have gone with one that recessed my winch, it would have complicated the installation a little bit. This was a simple bumper to install and it's durable and does what I need it to do. So that's kind of why I went that route. I also have Quadratech uh, Sleek three inch cube lights here on the front and some uh, shackles of course the winch i'm running is a warren vr evo this is a 10,000 uh, pound winch it is running uh, tactical recovery equipment uh, synthetic line and a pro uh, factor 55 pro link now the reason for the pro link is because that gives me a closed system i don't have to worry about any sort of uh link coming out or anything like that so that's why i ran that that does it for the front end 
Uh, moving back, we have Smitty built limb risers. This is in case a limb comes across, it gets directed out of the way. I have the hardware covered up with some rubber here, so when I open the hood, I don't have to worry about that scratching. Um, I normally you would mount these here on the A-pillar, but I didn't want to drill in and make a bracket since I already had my Smitty built XRC, or this is actually, I think, an SRC rack. I just mounted it on there with some brackets I got from Amazon. So, yeah, that keeps the limbs off the windshield, and uh, I, really, I really like them. I do have a mount here for my GMRS radio antenna, which is well, inside. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Moving back, I do have a fairing that I built myself, which is there to protect my solar panel. That is a Renogy 100 watt solar panel, and we'll talk about what that is for a little bit later. I have a CVT Cascade Vehicle Tents awning, and that is a 79 inch awning. It comes out, uh, I'll try to post a picture of that deployed. I have a rear awning. This is an OVS Overland Vehicle Systems four and a half feet, foot wide uh, awning that comes out as well. The basket is an Avenir basket. I replaced or flipped the uh, the logo plate around and put a Jeep sticker on there. I got that basket specifically due to the length because I needed something long enough to hold things that I would put up there and short enough not to interfere with my solar panel. Also up on top of the rack, I have an Apache uh, rifle case that I use for recovery gear. And I have an Ace Hardware shovel mounted with some quick fist and some brackets. The reason this is uh, taped up like this is because it started to split on me. So I got some uh, flex tape, but I may have to replace that shovel at some point but you know i kind of cheaped out on the shovel and it, it does what it needs to do but it, the sun started causing it to to split uh in the center piece which i think is fiberglass so what are you gonna do but yeah that kind of covers the armor and everything on the outside um oh one thing about the lift kit that i did replace was i went with some old man emu springs on the back so if you'll notice the springs on the back are black they do not match what's on the front uh, and the reason for that is because I'm putting all this equipment on here I'm gonna have a lot of camping gear on here I wanted to go with some heavy-duty springs on the back and uh, old man emu is kind of the way to go you know they've they've made stuff for years for rugged terrain out in uh, Australia so yeah really really glad I got those uh, the last thing here on the on the as far as accessories on the frame and the, and the outside is the XRC Smitty built uh, rear bumper. This is a no frills bumper. Um, I've got some shackle mounts. I've got a, um, a hitch receiver and nothing else. No light mounts, no nothing. And one of the reasons I went with this, first of all, was expense. It's a very inexpensive bumper. I think about $350. It's nice and fat, protects things well. And it also accommodates the down bar, uh, back support bar of my rack. The nice thing about the Smitty stuff is they accommodate their other stuff. So that's the reason for that. Under the hood, which is kind of coated in pollen right now, not a lot different under here. I do have some, uh, I think these are Quadratech uh, terminal posts that allow me to add some accessories. So my my winch power comes in there and my Vo switch. My Vo switch is my accessory switch box. It allows me to, you know, wire my lights and, and other accessories and control them inside, which we'll get to in a moment. There are better options out there as far as more sophisticated, like uh, I think S pods and things like that. They're very expensive. This thing was just uh, 260 somewhere in there, I think. So it's an eight port system, works well. You don't have to spend a lot of money uh, to get a good system. I saw these reviewed by Bleep and Jeep, and uh, I really, I really like it. It's been a great little box, and uh, yeah, wire everything right here, and you're good to go. My uh, solar panel comes in here, and then goes into the Jeep, and we'll talk about what that powers in a moment. 
All right, moving inside, we have our Rough Country grab handles. I like these, they mount right into the sides of the A-pillar and they are solid, a lot more solid than these that are up here on the bar. I mean, you can really grab these and not have to worry about pulling on them at all. Also, here's my uh, VoSwitch uh, control panel. You can uh, basically label it in here. They give you a big old packet of labels and uh, you can label it however you want. I kind of like the, uh, the Bigfoot one. Up here on the dash, this bar that goes across is my uh, Vector Off-Road Jeep dock, accessory dock. And it's great for mounting uh, RAM mounts. So I've got my cell phone mount and I have an iPad mount so that I can put uh, Gaia maps up there or whatever, put a map, whatever I need and uh, kind of go around where I want to go. I also have some little aluminum shelf pieces up here that I keep my ducks because Jeep people collect ducks. It's a Jeep thing. You just give each other ducks. And I got all my ducks in a row. <laughs> so also on the uh, console center mount here, I have some JCR off-road uh, Molly panels for mounting things like flashlights. I got a little flashlight holder there. Um, my knife can also mount there. The holster will just clip in behind it, though I usually just keep it laying on its side over there. You could also uh, put a holster there for your banana. If you had a banana and wanted to mount it there, um, you could do that. You know, it'll hold it very, very well. I haven't done that yet, but that's probably coming. So I'm running GMRS for my radio, for my comms, and this is a Midland MXT275. This is just the base unit. The actual radio and control is all here. And I have a little holder for it that comes with it. That is what the antenna outside is, is mounted for. Got a Rough Country CB holder that's designed to mount where that is, and that's what's holding it all together. So yeah, that takes care of my comms. I probably will add, I may add a uh, holder up here on the accessory dock for a handheld CB, since in the southeast, CB is still fairly prominent so I want to make sure that I cover all the bases that I need to cover as far as communications are concerned. Behind here I have a C, I think it's called XI Nightshade. That is a dash cam. It's mainly just there for traffic. It's not used for backcountry or anything like that. In fact, it will shut off on you when you're in the backcountry, I guess because of your speed or maybe because it doesn't see traffic, you know. I guess it has some intelligence there. And it'll just shut off on you so but it's there in case i'm in traffic and something happens under my seat here i have an xj moto under seat mount and uh, people use those to mount things like amplifiers and things like that but what i use it for is i've got a best tech 300 watt inverter the jeep comes with a uh, 150 watt inverter but it's not enough to power this brick. And this brick is what I need for AC to top off my Blue Eddy battery bank. And uh, it needs 200 watts, so 300 keeps me covered. And it is a little windy, so the wind blew my door shut. But uh, yeah, so my solar comes into this. I use this basically like a UPS, which probably isn't a good thing, but uh, it works. And it's got uh, 537 watts output on the inverter that's mounted into that or built into that. But I use it primarily for 12 volts, as you can see plugged in over there at the end. And that's basically to power my fridge, which we'll get to in a moment. I used to have the fridge mounted right here on this platform, but I built this little box instead just to keep some stuff in. And haven't really decided exactly what I'm gonna do with that box, but it's there for stuff that I might need. This is my tactical recovery equipment bag. This is what they send my synthetic winch line in, but I use it to keep to keep my ducks in. So when it's time to give a duck away to a fellow jeeper, I've got a bag full of them there. It's suspended up here on my rough country grab handles for the rear of the Jeep. So I have them front and back. Good people to get into the back and grab them here. There's one on the other side. Also in the back here, I have a Blue Ridge Overland attic system. This is basically a big mesh, and I throw things like jackets and extra clothes and 
other stuff up there. Also in the back back here, I have on each side another set of JCR off-road uh, molly panels. And you can just mount all kinds of stuff. I've got Clorox wipes. I've got all kinds of bags. And I got a nice uh, first aid kit here. On the other side, I've got bear spray. And then in that long tube you see there, uh, that's my Element 50. Element 50 or Element 55? I'll put a correction at the bottom. That's a fire extinguisher. And the nice thing about that fire extinguisher is that um, it's rated for vehicle use. So it will not damage wires and stuff if you have to put out a fire under the hood. Unlike most of your uh, hardware store fire extinguishers, they're not rated for automotive. So keep that in mind. When you go to get one, you need to order one that's rated for automotive. So yeah, that covers, uh, covers the interior pretty much except for the back, so we'll do that next. Here, I have a front runner tailgate table, and this is where I do my cooking. I keep a little rubber mat here so that my uh, stove doesn't slide around. I have a little slide out. It's supposed to be a cutting board. I just use it as extra uh, table space, if you will, when I'm making camp food. And that's really nice. I've really enjoyed this. It's been... Uh, an integral part of my of my camping uh, setup because it really just it just comes in so handy and the Coleman stove that I'm using fits right on it and uh, yeah that's really nice uh, one other thing about the tailgate is I do have a uh, TerraFlex uh, spare tire extension and that basically brings the spare tire out and up because when I was shutting my tailgate, my spare tire would just start to catch right here. And uh, so that's what that is for. Inside, I've got an Iceco JP50 fridge. This is a 50 liter. And it's, a, it's not a dual zone, but it does have a basket that can be divided. You can take the divider out and put whatever. And then, of course, you've got... Uh, an uncooled area back there for things like you know fruit and vegetables whatever it's a great little fridge um, it uses a Danfoss compressor if you keep up at all with uh, camp fridges you know that Danfoss compressors are great they have a five-year warranty uh, a lot of these companies will make and Ice Coast one of them they make lines of fridges that have uh, a cheaper uh, compressor and they have some that uh, have the Danfoss that are a little bit more so you can kind of pick your your uh, budget if you need to but these are already pretty budget friendly I, I think this was roughly 500 bucks I mean you can't beat it really and uh, you know it can hold enough food for easily a week if I'm by myself I have it on a slider that I also got from Iceco and uh, I can slide that on out and open it up and and have it right here and then of course with my awning out here I don't have to worry about uh, the rain or the sun I can get up in the morning and cook and all that good stuff I built this little box uh, eventually there's gonna be there's gonna be drawers here two drawers uh, that's why this isn't painted because it's it's temporary but it's just a box I built to keep my stove in and other stuff I haven't decided exactly where I'm keeping everything but this was just temporary uh, I also left a little gap here so that when the Danfoss compressor kicks on the fan has a way to to vent out and I don't I don't uh, You know don't choke it out. All that's mounted on a nice piece of uh, I think that's birch plywood I got a great deal on that a big old slab of it uh, a sheet had been cut and uh, Lowe's just gave me their leftover piece. I said hey, can I buy that piece? And They're like I just take it so I'm like, ah, That's what I'll do <laughs> But uh, worked out really well. It uh, actually, because of this little lip here, it gives me a space right under it where I just have some foam because I have the uh, subwoofer, the factory subwoofer that mounts in the floor is under there. And I thought about removing it and using that area for something, but uh, they say you can cover it up like that and it's fine. It'll still work because of the way it's designed. So I just left it and uh, doesn't seem to rattle or do any pro you know give me any kind of problem so i really really like that and yeah but that gives me a foundation to build other stuff like i say there'll be two drawers here eventually and i'm hoping to get those built soon i leave a little gap on the side too because i got like my privacy tent there if i want to have my own my own uh, latrine if you will when i'm out camping and i throw that up and i put my 
port portable toilet in there. But yeah, that kind of covers everything in the back. Um, you know, I've got miscellaneous stuff that I tuck in places. I got a little tripod if I want to do some stationary recording. You know, and I, I use the space in behind these molly panels for all kinds of stuff. Oh, one other thing that's kind of cool. I saw a guy do this in his Jeep. I've got a paper towel rack here, and this one mounts uh, with 3M. It's 3M double-sided tape that comes with it, basically. And uh, this would normally be, of course, about this long, but I cut it down, put the cap down here, and that gives me room to actually get in here and put it down. So that worked out really well. I saw another guy do that and I thought that is really cool and it works out great. I've always got paper towels and uh, can always wipe up a mess if I need to. So it gets a little dusty back here, but uh, yeah, that kind of takes care of the back of the Jeep. Yeah, that's kind of it for a walk around of old Gobi. You know, I, I built Gobi to get me to where I needed to go. You know, it's, it's about getting in the back country hiking and camping and you know i am first and foremost a hiker i'm not a wheeler per se i don't really care too much about rock crawling or any of that that's why it's not built any more uh you know extreme than it is because you know her job is to just get me out there and get me back home but uh, some of you have expressed interest in uh, walk around so i thought i'd go ahead and, and do that hopefully you enjoyed it um, if you have any questions you can leave a comment below and uh you know, we'll have some more things going on with, with Gobi. Um, bigger tires are coming. Probably the running boards, which are factory, those will come off and some rock sliders will go on. That's just in case. That's not because I'm going to intentionally be doing a lot of rock crawling, but you never know what you're going to run into. So, yeah. But yeah, it's been a great Jeep so far. I really like it. This, this color came along and it was like, I want a green or I want this color when i saw this one available i said that's the one i want and uh, it's been really great and uh you know hopefully she'll take me on lots of adventures and you know those of you who are not really into jeeping you know you can kind of just stick stick over into the uncle joe hikes playlist and everything will go there and there will be some bleed over obviously but uh if you're interested in more jeep stuff i'll be posting all of my jeep stuff primarily in the uncle joe jeeps playlist of my channel just to kind of like give you an option you know if you're not interested in, in jeep stuff so but hopefully you enjoyed this if you did like i say uh, give it a like if you have any questions let me know and uh you know if you have a jeep yourself tell me about your jeep i'd love to hear about it you know as, as jeep people we we like to talk about jeeps you know i have a, a club that i'm in and we just all get together and do nothing but stand around and talk about jeeps anyway hope you had a great weekend and uh we'll talk to you soon